story um, picks up the theme of Florence's last poem beautifully. It's one of Grace's longest stories, so I'm not going to read it all, but parts of it. And it's called Friends. It's about three friends, Faith, Anne, and Susan, who travel somewhere on a train to see their friend Selena, who is dying. To put us at our ease, to quiet our hearts as she lay dying, our dear friend Selena said, Life, after all, has not been an unrelieved horror. You know, I did have many wonderful years with her. She pointed to a child who leaned out of a portrait on the wall. Long brown hair, white pinafore, head and shoulders forward. Eagerness, said Susan. Anne closed her eyes. On the same wall, three little girls were photographed in a schoolyard. They were in furious discussion. They were holding hands. Right in the middle of the coffee table, framed, in autumn colors, a handsome young woman of 18 sat on an enormous horse, aloof, disinterested, a rider. One night, this young woman, Selena's child, was found in a rooming house in a distant city, dead. The police called. They said, do you have a daughter named Abby? And with him, too, our friend Selena said, we have good times, Max and I, you know that. There were no photographs of him. He was married to another woman and had a new stalwart girl of about six to whom no harm would ever come, her mother believed. Our dear Selena had gotten out of bed. Heavily, but with a comic dance, she soft-shoed to the bathroom, singing, Those were the days, my friend. On the way back to the bed, she stopped at her desk. There were about 20 snapshots scattered across it, the baby, the child, the young woman. Here, she said to me, take this one. It's a shot of Abby and your Richard in front of the school. Third grade, what a day. The show those kids put on, what a bunch of kids. What's Richard doing now? Oh, who knows, horsing around someplace, Spain. These days it's Spain. Who knows where he is, they're all the same. Why did I say that? I knew exactly where he was. He writes. In fact, he found a broken phone and was able to call every day for a week, mostly to give orders to his brother, but also to say, are you okay, Ma? How's your new boyfriend? Did he smile yet? <laughs> the kids, they're all the same, I said. It was only politeness, I think, not to pour my boy's light, noisy face into that dark afternoon. Richard used to say in his early, mean teens, you'd sell us down the river to keep Selena happy and innocent. It's true. Whenever Selena would say, I don't know, Abby has some peculiar friends, I'd answer for a stupid comfort, you should see Richard's. Still, he's in Spain, Selena said, at least you know that. It's probably interesting. He'll learn a lot. Richard is a wonderful boy, Faith. He acts like a wise guy, but he's not. You know, the night Abby died, when the police called me and told me, that was my first night's sleep in two years. I knew where she was. Selena said this very matter-of-factly, just offering a few informative sentences. But Anne, listening, said, oh, she called out to us all, oh, and began to sob. Her straightforwardness had become an arrow and gone right into her own heart. Then a deep, tear-drying breath. I want a picture, too, she said. Yes, yes, wait, I have one here someplace. Abby and Judy and that Spanish kid, Victor. Where is it? Ah, here. Three nine-year-old children sat high on that long-armed sycamore in the park, dangling their legs on someone's patient head. Smooth, dark hair parted in the middle. Was that head a kitty's? Our dear friend laughed. Another great day, she said, wasn't it? I remember you two sizing up the men. I had one at the time, I thought. Some joke. Here, take it, I have two copies. But you ought to get it enlarged. When this you see, remember me. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, girls, excuse me, I mean ladies, it's time for me to rest. She took Susan's arm and continued that awful walk to her bed. We didn't move. We had a long journey ahead of us and had expected a little more comforting before we set off. No, she said, you'll only miss the express. I'm not in much pain. I got lots of painkillers, see? The tabletop was full of little bottles. I just want to lie down and think of Abby. Nothing special. Just think about her, you know? 
At home, Anthony, my youngest son, said, Hello, you just miss Richard. He's in Paris now. He had a call collect. Collect from Paris? He saw my sad face and made one of the herb teas used by his peer group to calm their overwrought natures. He does want to improve my pretty good health and spirits. His friends have a book that say a person should, if properly nutrition, live forever. He wants me to give it a try. He also believes that the human race, its brains, and good looks will end in his time. At about 11.30, he went out to live the pleasures of his 18-year-old nighttime life. At 3 a.m., he found me washing the floors and making little apartment repairs. More tea, Mom? He asked. He sat down to keep me company. <coughs> Okay, Faith, I know you feel terrible, but how come Selena never realized about Abby? Anthony, what the hell do I realize about you? Come on, you had to be blind. I was just a little kid and I saw, honest to God. Listen, Tonto, basically, Abby was okay. She was. You don't know yet what their times can do to a person. Here she goes with her goody goodies. Everything is so groovy, wonderful, far out, terrific. Next time you'll say people are darling and the world is so nice and round that Union Carbide will never blow it up. I have never said anything as hopeful as that. And why, to all our knowledge of that sad day, did Tonto at 3 a.m. have to add the fact of the world? The next night, Max called from North Carolina. How's Selena? I'm flying up, he said. I have one early morning appointment that I'm canceling everything. At 7 a.m., Annie called. I barely brushed my morning teeth. It was hard, she said, the whole damn thing. I don't mean Selena, all of us, in the train. None of you seemed real to me. Real? Reality, huh? Listen, how about coming over for breakfast? I don't have to get going until after 9. I have this neat sourdough rye. No, she said. Oh, Christ, no, no. I remember Anne's eyes and the hat she wore the day we first looked at each other. Our babies had just stepped howling out of the sandbox on their new walking legs. We picked them up. Over their sandy heads, we smiled. I think a bond was sealed then, at least as useful as the vow we'd all sworn with husbands to whom we're no longer married. Hindsight, usually looked down upon, is probably as valuable as foresight since it does include a few facts. <laughs> Meanwhile, Anthony's world, poor, dense, defenseless thing, rolls round and round. Living and dying are fastened to its surface and stuffed into its softer parts. He was right to call my attention to its suffering and danger. He was right to harass my responsible nature. But I was right to invent for my friends and our children a report on these private deaths and the condition of our lifelong attachments. Mm -hmm.